Hey guys, what's going on? Hope everybody's doing well out there today and welcome back here to another edition of The Fishing Teacher. I appreciate you guys checking today's video out. And today we're gonna to give you guys a foundational seminar understanding of what seasonal patterns are as far as fishing goes and sort of uh, run through a little bit briefly, get sort of give you an understanding because um, I think a lot of people, you know, if they're getting started in fishing, um, they don't know what seasonal patterns are. They don't know how it affects fish. So um, if you're going to become a better angler, one of the things you have to do is you have to understand why and when fish move based upon certain times of the year. So we'll get into that a little bit. So the seasonal patterns, a lot of it, guys, has to do with the part of the country that you're in. Because if um, you're, say, for example, if you're down way down south, like in Florida or some of the Gulf Coast states, something like that, um, you don't have the distinct four seasons like we do, for example, in my part of the country or up north. Um, around here, we have very distinct seasons in terms of it's cold in the winter, it's mild in the spring, it's hot in the summer, mild in the fall. Um, whereas if you live in Florida, you know, it's pretty much the same all the, all the year long, which is some slight uh, fluctuations. So the degree of which seasonal patterns affect fish, a lot of it has to do with the uh, part of the country. And I'll say this right off the bat, if, you're, if, you, if you live in Florida, South Texas, all that type of stuff, Southern California, um, the seasonal patterns don't really, really apply. That's one of the sort of an exception to the rule. But most people fall under a more temperate um, climate throughout the throughout the United States. So first of all, let's start with winter. We'll go winter, spring, summer, fall. And this is something we could, this could be a two hour, three, four hour long seminar, but I'm gonna give you guys sort of just a basic foundation and then we'll do more stuff on it a little bit later or on my other channel, my Intuitive Angler channel. First of all, the winter time. The winter is the time of year where most fish are dormant because fish are cold-blooded and water temperatures are at their coldest in the winter time. So they tend to be um, a little less active. Not to mean they don't feed because they, they'll feed, they have to, they feed all winter long, but they simply don't chase as much. They're not as actively feeding. They're a little bit you know, more docile with that. And um, same, that's the same with the, everything else in the lake that lives there. The crawdads, the bait fish, it's a, it all just sort of slows down in the winter time. Now, the winter time is, as far as when you're talking about a seasonal pattern, it's characterized by the coldest temperatures of the year. Now, the, you start having a change in that, sort of like in February, when you get longer daylight hours, uh, water starts slightly warming up a little bit, that's when you move into the next uh, phase here. And then got, for, before we get into that, guys, so one of the things you have to understand is that one of the biggest uh, factors in fishing as far as the fish doing different stuff is the increasing daylight hours or the decreasing daylight hours. That has a, that has a big impact on the seasonal patterns. But anyway, when you start getting into February, especially like mid to late February, um, daylight hours are getting longer a little bit, um, you're getting slight warmth, a little bit more warmth in the water, not much, but a little bit. And that sort of triggers the fish into the first stage of what's called the pre-spawn. Now, during the pre-spawn, that's when the fish are sort of like, their egg sacs are forming. They're starting to move a little bit and making a migration a little bit into shallower water to start preparing, uh, preparing for spawning, you know, as the spring goes on and as you start having water temperatures warm up, uh, you know, into the 50s and 60s, which is normally like March and April, like we're in right now, that is when a lot of the fish on the lake are starting to, they're starting to look for areas to build beds. They're either starting to, to bed and actively spawning. That, this, is the, this is the seasonal pattern moving into the prime springtime spawning time of the year. And this usually lasts, this, this entire ritual of the pre-spawn and the spawn usually starts when the water temperatures start to get into the low 50s and it lasts up until where the water temperature is around 70 for the most part, which puts you into like early May for the most part. So that is the seasonal pattern for from the transition from winter into like May, the first five months of the year. So it's dead of the winter, dormant, pre-spawn, spawn. Now, once you start to get into May, and a lot of the fish have, um, you know, are done spawning, that's when they start to uh, move a little bit again. And they start to move out of those flatter, shallow spawning areas that they've been spawning in. 
and they start to disperse a little bit. Now, not all of them swim out to deep water. They do a little bit as it gets later into the summer, but the, the movement after the fish spawn, some of the fish will stay in and around where they spawn to like guard the fry and to feed up and to use whatever cover is available, but they gradually start dispersing. Some of them stay shallow, some of them hang around mid-depth, some of them start to move into a little bit deeper water. And by the time you enter June, you're in what is called the, the late post-spawn, after spawning or early summer uh, seasonal movement, seasonal patterns. Now the early summer, late, late post-spawn, early summer, is when a lot of the fish are beginning to move out into their summer areas. Now their summer areas depending upon, it depends on the type of lake you're fishing. If you're fishing, you know, say a lake like uh, Lake Chickamauga or, or, or Lake Kentucky Lake, that means a lot of those bass are starting to move offshore onto the ledges. Um, if you're fishing, uh, you know, a lake like Lake of the Ozarks in my part of the country, a lot of those fish could move from the back of the coves and start moving out underneath the boat docks there. All depends on the structure you have available on that. But in general, the bass start forming, the, the seasonal movement from the springtime to the summer, they start forming a distinct population of fish that live shallow, like resident shallow fish, and resident deeper fish. It's almost like 50-50. You got some fish that will stay shallow all summer long to use shallow cover and to feed on perch that live shallow and then you have some bass that'll move deeper. Some of them suspend, some of them get out on the bottom. And this summer pattern usually lasts, um, or the summer seasonal pattern or seasonal movement of fish usually lasts up until like the end of September, first part of October. It's a pretty long season. It actually goes on from, like I said, from pretty much from like June to the end of September, October, something like that. And it's sort of this, sort of like the, uh, uh, one of the most diverse times of year to fish because you can catch fish on everything in the summertime. You can fish top waters early, you can flip and pitch around cover, you can fish a deep diving crankbait, you can fish a drop shot for suspended fish. Fish are doing a lot of different stuff because in the summertime, one of the uh, seasonal things that happens is you have a thermocline form on the lake where you have uh, different levels or different uh, amounts of oxygen that, that stratifies throughout the lake. And a lot of those fish will stay right above the thermocline to get in that uh, premium oxygen and suspend. And then some of them are gonna stay shallow all summer. But the next seasonal movement that you have is once you enter the fall period, like the late summer, early fall, and your daylight hours are getting shorter, water temperatures are slowly starting to cool off because the nights are cooler that's when the fish move into this fall transition, the fall movement. And the fall movement is sort of like a transition of more fish moving into shallow water, where in the summertime, you've got fish scattered out all over the place. In the fall time of the year, especially as the water temperatures start to drop into the 50s, a lot of those fish start to move shallow as long as you don't have super, super clear water. One of the, the outliers in that is if you've got a lake that has extremely clear water, a lot of those, you'll have half of those fish that sort of suspend out in deep water and half of them move shallow. And then as the water cools off and you get back into the winter, the cycle sort of repeats itself. But um, one of the things about it, guys, is like there's, you can, you have to have sort of a basic uh, you know, foundation as far as where to begin to look for fish. And, and the way I just laid it out is the way it works in most bodies of water. Now, like I said, the exception to the rule with that is every lake is unique to themselves. If you guys fish up on the Great Lakes, that's going to be a little bit different. If, if you're fishing in Lake Okeechobee in Florida, that's going to be different. But you got to have a starting point somewhere. So the main thing is realize that um, the daylight hours, as far as getting longer, shorter, combined with the water temperatures and the weather patterns will trigger these seasonal movements of the fish. And it's just an ongoing cycle uh, of the balance and cycle of life. So hope that helps out guys. We'll be back with another one soon.